the 22 yards that made that little boy into the legend. Plug Virat Kohli in and you'll never have a power shortage. Oh, 6 and 4 seems to be the new binary code for this man. 11 on 10 for him. These are definitely Smith's ashes. So 2020 is upon us. The year will be full of references to the year 2020 and the format 2020. And of all the things I'm looking forward to in this year, starting from looking at it from India's perspective, nothing occupies my mind more than that World T20 in Australia. Since India won the Champions Trophy in 2013, India have gone seamlessly through the group stages and have lost a big game somewhere along the line. And I hope it doesn't become an obsession to win the T20 because it's important to want to win it desperately. But the more you obsess over it, the more you make it a win at all cost situation, the more pressure you put on the sides. And that is exactly what happened to South Africa in so many of those crunch games, going into a game very taut, tense, wondering what would happen if they don't win. I think India have the side. To, uh, to do well at the World T20. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they go about it, but that should be objective number one, even though there's a very, very interesting test series against Australia to follow. What else am I looking forward to? I want the Ranji Trophy to be more competitive. I know you want one team per state, and therefore you've got, what, 37, 38 teams in, in the Ranji Trophy. We're getting far too many one-sided games. I would have been happier if we had one team from the Northeast, maybe different teams at the age group level, but one team from the North Northeast, which would make them more competitive, which would make them a prouder side, and then say maybe four or five years from now, as the game starts to take root and grow, which it inevitably will, then you start having state teams. But at the moment, my wish is for a more competitive Ranji Trophy. I have a few other wishes for cricket in India. I'm very, very keen to see the standard of governance in the states rise. Remember, that was one of the objectives of the Loda Commission. We are hearing very unhappy things coming out of Hyderabad. Azaruddin has his hands full. He's got to stop these uh, utterances coming out now, and that means he's got to stop the reality uh, beneath the utterances. What we saw in Delhi was uh, was not great viewing, and I hope Saurav Ganguly has got his hands full with so many things. He's made a great start, by the way. He's made a fantastic start, but he's got his hands full with so many things. I hope he's able to strengthen the levels of governance in state cricket because that is where your next big players are going to come from. I'd like to see the NCA become this great centre of excellence. And I'm overjoyed to see that so early in his presidency, Saurav Ganguly is already talking about NCA. Ganguly and Dravid, two people whose heart beats for Indian cricket are already talking about what to do with the NCA. It's not covered itself with glory in recent times, but the NCA has to be the prime centre of excellence in Indian cricket. And I hope that leads to fewer incidences of fudging. Manjot Kalra was one of the stars of the Under-19 World Cup along with Shubman Gill, Prithvi Shaw and a couple of others. Do we know if he was under-19? I don't want people pointing fingers at India and saying that you're picking players who are, who are older than they are. But for that, you've got to create a climate in the country where age fudging is not allowed. And I think the bigger crime is committed by those that allow age fudging than by the players who actually fudge their age. So I'm looking forward to India addressing this whole issue of age fudging very seriously. Already players are being banned, which is a good deterrent, but I think we need to do just a little bit more to ensure that uh, that, that doesn't happen. So that's what I'm looking forward to uh, within India as well. Lots to look forward to in world cricket too. I think the world, world cricket needs South Africa to be strong. There's a great cricket culture there in South Africa. One excellent result already against England but remember there are political realities that will come back and South African cricket will have to play within those political realities and they need far more uh, players like Ngidi, like Rabada, a better version of Bavuma, maybe a reincarnated Temba Bavuma to make South Africa much stronger but see what a difference it makes when the air you breathe in the dressing room is different. Graham Smith, Jacques Cullis, Mark Boucher comes back, suddenly everyone wants to play cricket. So, South Africa have taken a very good step forward. I'd love to see West Indies getting stronger. I think there are more green shoots in the West Indies. You might, you might be surprised to hear that, but in my view, there's more green shoots being seen in the West Indies. We've now got a very good white ball captain. We've got a really good coach back again. So, South Africa, West Indies being strong. I'd like to see more cricket played in Pakistan because there's some great fans over there. They want to see cricket played there. See what happened when two test matches went back. I don't understand the political reality. I don't always understand the utterances that come on. I don't always agree with them. But within the political reality, I hope more people can, can go 
to Pakistan because that is what will revive cricket in there. There are far too many dull, lifeless test matches being played in the UAE. So I, I hope Pakistan have had enough of that. There's one big factor that's looming over 2020 and that's corruption in our game. It's linked to the decline of test cricket and the growth of T20 leagues. As people start to fear whether the amount of money they get from the ICC will be less or whether the amount of money they are getting from the ICC is enough to support test cricket and the leagues within, they will start to move towards more and more T20 cricket. That's not wrong because cricket cannot survive within a, a romantic bubble. It's got, to, it's, got to take, it's got to look at the commercial reality around. But going towards T20 cricket is not a way out of despair because very few T20 leagues are making money. And if you're not making money out of the T20 leagues, if the money you're getting from the ICC is not enough, then you will start to go to where the money is calling and that can sometimes lead to having dubious partners. And that is the biggest issue before T20 leagues around the world at the moment. So I'm hoping that cricket can stay financially strong enough not to have to move towards people of dubious means in T20 cricket. So there you are, that's what I'm looking forward to in T20 cricket. I think Test cricket will still stay strong. Uh, T20 cricket will grow. One day cricket is something you keep beating with and it always pops its head up and say, you know what, I'm still around.